the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Sunday after the Theophany, the great feast of the revelation of the Holy Trinity, and immediately after passing 40 days in the desert and the temptations of the evil one, our Lord begins his divine mission to save humanity. And everything and every word that he speaks is for us and for our salvation. And we heard today in the gospel, the Lord's words, which are the foundation of our life in Christ, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the foundation, the ground in which our spiritual life will grow. And yet we hear the word in English and unfortunately, we have not a clear understanding of what the Lord said because of the translation and the word, the understanding of the word in English has been distorted over time because of heterodox piety and theology. The word in Greek, metanoite, metania, is to change one's mind, but not the rational mind, the dianya in Greek, but the nous of man. Nia, metania, the nous of man. And this is not a change simply of thoughts, but is a change of stance of the whole being. It's an ontological change. It's a change of perspective, a change of the entire positioning of the soul before God. Change your way of being, the Lord is saying. Change your way of thinking, but in the sense of about God and about this world and about salvation, these higher things. He's not asking us to change the way we think about this life, but about the way we are relating to God. Change, and this kind of change does not happen simply because we will it, but because God wills it and we say yes. So this ground in which the spiritual life is going to take root and flourish is repentance. It's a lifelong state of being. It's not a momentary, momentary feeling of remorse. We see in other parts of scripture, a great injustice to the text is done when they're speaking of Judas. And they say in English, he repented of what he did. No, he did not. For if he had repented, he would have followed the, the example, the later example of Peter who once again joined the choir of the apostles. He did not repent, he had remorse. Remorse, feeling bad about yourself, about the things you've done, is not salvific, does not save, does not transfigure, does not restore one to the communion with God. One has to change the way they think and live and stand all of our thoughts come from our stance before God. When we stand with pride, the thoughts are proud. When we stand with judgmentalness to our brother and sister, we judge. Before the mind thinks the thoughts, the soul feels them, the, the heart expresses them. This deep man needs to change. The deeper heart, the, 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 the whole process of the spiritual life is to take this noose, this organ of the soul which communes with God and put it in the heart and that heart be broken and it have a sense of not just remorse but a sense of need to return to God. So another way to understand repentance is return and the Lord teaches us that with the parable of the prodigal son. What does the prodigal son do? You remember the, the parable. He's in with the pigs. 
in the pigsty, eating the food of the animals far from his father. And he comes to himself. He has a change of heart, a change of mind. He has what? Aftonosi in Greek, self-knowledge. He comes to himself. He realizes who he is made in the image and likeness of God and who his father is and what he has lost. This is the beginning but not the end of repentance for the prodigal son. What does he do? He gets up and leaves the pigsty of sin and apostasy and separation and he begins the road of return. This is repentance and it doesn't end until the last breath leaves us. It is a stance of our entire life. And in this ground, on this foundation, then is built the spiritual life. Repentance is not feeling bad and going and saying to the priest, I did it again. Uh, no, this is remorse. Repentance is going to the priest and then returning to the battlefield and not going back to the pigsty, not going back to the sin. This is repentance. This is repentance. Repentance is essentially our offering to God, our yes with the mother of God. When the angel came to the mother of God and announced the good news of salvation, it was a gift, an entire divine act. There was no human at that moment act until the mother of God said yes. And that was the human synergy with the divine will. And then the incarnation took place. The same thing has to happen in each one of us. The Lord has given us salvation in baptism. The seed is there. Why is it not growing within us? Because the yes is hit and miss. Yes today, no tomorrow. It has to be a continuous yes. This is the ascetic life. Without asceticism, there is no Christianity, no church, no Christian life. Because Asceticism is love. Asceticism is yes to God. Continually, yes to God. Fasting, prayer, this is our response to His love, and we do it, when we do it for Him and in Him, then we are on the path of repentance. When we do it because we believe in religion, and we do it for the sake of being a good person, and not for the person of Christ. The prodigal got up and went back to his father. He embraced the person of God. And then union happened and salvation was achieved, was realized. If we are doing it for any other reason, if we are here today, are we going to confession tomorrow or last night for any other reason besides wanting to be united to the person of Christ, then we are still not quite on the road of repentance. Our mind is not united to the purpose of our struggle. Why we are doing this? We are here for one reason, to be united to Christ. Repentance, brothers and sisters, is to take our intellect, our the, the higher part of our soul, and put it in our heart and not leave there until we die. There where there is love for the person of Christ. And he says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What is this kingdom of God? We have been confused again by heterodox thinking and heterodox theology, who thinks that there will be a kingdom on earth, a millennium of rule of Christ, like the Jews who awaited a Messiah who would give them a political solution to their problems with the Romans. How sad and how pathetic and how poor and how limited is this vision of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God in Greek is vasilia and it could be translated and is better translated as reign of God, the rule of God in our hearts. The kingdom of God is within you, the Lord says. It is not an external kingdom. It is not a, rest a rest restoration of the great days of the King David. It's not the restoration of Holy Russia with a great emperor over our land. This is not the kingdom of God. This is 
a blessed thing, a wonderful thing. It can help many on the path of the kingdom of God, but it is not the kingdom of God. The piece of earth that needs to be reigned over is our heart, our body, our soul. This is where the king wants to reign. The kingdom of God is at hand, meaning I am at hand. I have come. The Lord himself, uh, the incarnation, is before you. The king of heaven is now on earth. It is at hand. The kingdom is within. It is a spiritual kingdom. It is when truth reigns in our heart and the evil one, the liar, is far from us. The kingdom of God is Christ himself. The reign of God is Christ himself. When he sits on the throne of our heart, when we offer continually a divine liturgy in our heart, and we say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me continually. And he reigns in that heart. And that heart then is free from the kingdom of the enemy. And he reigns and rules and guides us. So repent, change your whole way of being and seeing and doing. See as God sees. Obtain the divine perspective. And where does that happen? And how does it happen? In the church. When we say it's in Christ and for Christ, we mean in the church and in the holy mysteries. This is where the reign of God takes place. When we enter and submit to Christ. St. Paul says the church of God submits to Christ. So that submission is a prerequisite for the reign of God in us. And that submission, again, is not a one-time yes, but a continual stance before God. And then he reigns and rules within us. And it is at hand, and it is near. Igis is the Greek word, and it means near. It's close to us. Well, after the death and resurrection of our Lord and the ascension, then came Pentecost, and that kingdom which was near to us came within us with the descent of the Holy Spirit. And the kingdom, the reign, the rule of God comes, as we said, with the descent of the Holy Spirit in the mysteries of baptism, chrismation, and when we commune continually. It's a continual process of regeneration and transfiguration. So this, this reign, brothers and sisters, let's not be de deceived and think that it's going to be achieved with sentimentality or a good disposition only, but with much blood and sweat and tears do the people who enter the kingdom of God enter therein. Pray that I repent and that we all make progress on the path of repentance, purification, illumination of our noose, our mind, and our heart, and that God may be all in all within us. Amen.